Welcome to Crafty Beach. This is Julie, and today we're going to do beach tear tray DIYs. We're going to do three different beach themed tear trays, and hopefully, you'll get lots of inspiration. We're going to start with the first one with one of these little sandcastle uh, buckets from the Dollar Tree. Doesn't matter which color you get, just get one that's kind of the style you like. I think this is like a traditional, like, sandcastle look. And the first thing we're gonna do is paint it. I'm using chalk paint, but you can kind of use whatever you have. I was just looking for a color that's gonna be similar to sand to cover up all of the bright yellow that's on my little sand castle. I had removed this strap for the bucket. It does leave the little plastic tabs on the side, but that's okay. It didn't really bother me, so I just left those on there. And I'm just using a brush so I can kind of get down in between all of the texture and the bricks and everything on there. It's actually quite detailed. And what we're gonna do is just make a really fun sandcastle for the top of my tear tray. This is gonna work great because it can just sit right on top. And um, if there's a pole or anything like that, you can kind of just cover that up with your little sandcastle as well. Okay, next step, let's make it look authentic. I'm gonna use some Dollar Tree sand. The one I chose is the tan sand, but it would look really cute with the white sand as well. And I am just gonna use Mod Podge and we are gonna go over the sand castle and cover it with glue. You could also use school glue that works really well for sand as well. Sand is pretty lightweight, so it's pretty easy to glue onto things. Um, the purpose of the tan paint first is because any areas that won't be covered in sand will still kind of match and blend in without any bright yellow or fluorescent colors like peeking through. But I'm trying to get like a good coat all over um, with my foam brush and keep it nice and wet. And then we can start covering this in sand. This was a really fun, you know, I like to cover things with sand for DIYs all the time, but I think this was my first sand castle. It was so much fun to make. So I just start sprinkling all over. I put it on a Dollar Tree tray to kind of catch my sand that I could always reuse. And I'm just gonna go one side at a time and just start getting as much sand adhered to our little sand castle as we can. And it's looking really cute already. Now the next step to make it stay on there, I like to use this spray adhesive. I get this at the Dollar Tree. It can be a little hard to find. And then I'll sprinkle a little bit more sand over that wet sand and it's going to give me kind of a second layer of sand and any areas that kind of need it for a little bit better coverage and this really does look like a sand castle in the end it's super cute and fun so we are going to spray it with a little bit more of that spray adhesive to make sure all of our sand stays put and i give it a quick dry and look at our cute little sand castle perfect for a beach tear tray. And I'll show you towards um, the end of this section how I put that together. Now here is our next find from um, the toy aisle actually at Dollar Tree. These cute little Adirondack chairs. They are perfect I think for a beach tray, but you kind of can tell that they're plastic, a little bit toy-like, right? So I thought we could paint these um, they're already a color I really like, that teal blue, but I'm gonna mix together like some Caribbean blue, some ivory, and get a really a nice a light blue cover, color, and going in there with a chunky brush, kind of painting all over these, kind of getting it just exactly the right color I want. What that's gonna do is it's really gonna make it not look like plastic. It's gonna make it look way more like wood. You're gonna see all of the brush strokes in there 
and um, you kind of have to go in and do the back and like arms and stuff as well. You're going to want it to be pretty uniform in color. And this was a really easy DIY. And they do have these again this year. I just picked up some of these the other day. They also have like the Adirondack chair where it like lays down. I think it might be purple. That would be really cute to use on a tear tray as well. Now that I have it kind of painted all over, we can decorate it. Look how cute it is. I love that light beachy blue color. And it just totally gives it a different feel, way less like a toy. And then I'm gonna use some of the little fairy garden decorations. They have so many cute beach ones. They have so many this year that I've never seen before. But I thought like one of the little buckets of sand would be really cute to go with my little beach themed tear tray. And to decorate like the little table that's going in between both of the chairs. I'm just gonna touch mine up a little bit. Sometimes these are painted a little bit sloppy, but sometimes they're pretty good. I'm just being extra and touching mine up a little bit, and then I'm gonna secure it to the little table with a little dot of hot glue on the bottom so it stays in place. Now I was trying to think about what to decorate these with. I didn't have any little people, but I came up with a really fun plan to put into the chairs. How about some of the Dollar Tree Shore Living Starfish? We're gonna make two little starfish people. I'm just gonna leave them white. They fit perfectly in the ad little Adirondack chairs and it's gonna give you another coastal beachy touch. So that DIY is ready. The next item is also from Dollar Tree. It's just a little light blue ceramic whale. I think they have these a lot of the time. I've been able to find them there for a couple of years. I'm not sure if they're necessarily shore living or not, but I didn't really like like this super glossy porcelain. So we're gonna go over ours with some matte Mod Podge to try to tone that down, just to kind of make it go more with my coastal farmhouse vibe that we're going for on the tear tray. And see how that really took the sheen off there? I'm also gonna go back in and distress mine a little bit, just to make mine look a little bit more like wood, just with a little ivory, a chunky brush, doing some nice distressing marks all over. Now, when you wipe off any excess paint, be careful, because you don't wanna take off that matte Mod Podge, but I'm just kinda doing a light distress all over, and this little whale is gonna look so cute on our little beach tear tray. And here he is, ready to go. Okay, the next thing we're gonna use is a Dollar Tree Shore Living bottle. A little bottle, this one says sand of my favorite beach. They have lots of different ones. I like this one because I like that color of blue of the writing and it's gonna be so easy to do. All we're gonna do is have to fill it up with some sand. It really can be sand from your favorite beach or if you like me, you have lots of Dollar Tree sand, and I had some leftover from making the sand castle, so we're gonna use it. And we're just gonna fill up the little bottle, and it has a little cork for the top, so easy and cute, and it's the perfect size, I think, for a tear tray. I just cut a hole in the bottom of the plastic bag I was storing mine in. That worked pretty well, still made a little bit of a mess, but you could always use a funnel. And then we're gonna fill up the top with little Dollar Tree seashells, the ones that come in the little glass bottles to make a little faux beach. Easy peasy, that's ready to go on the tear tray. Now, this is another fairy garden item. It is a sand castle, isn't it cute? They have um, a different version of this this year too um, that looks a little bit more like granular sand than this one. This one's kinda got that brick look. And I like it, but I'm just gonna touch it up a little bit just to make sure that it is painted well and kind of goes with the vibe of the other thing. So just kind of going over it with that kind of sand colored paint that I had, just to distress it here and there. And then I'm just gonna touch up some of the areas that are painted, but it's mostly just all tan. And there was a little blue bucket on there, so I'm just gonna touch that up too. 
And then it wasn't quite tall enough to sit in my tear tray that you could see it. So I'm just using a Dollar Tree um, round wood block that I had had painted gray from another tear tray. But I want mine to kind of look like sand, kind of matching with the sand castle vibe. So I'm going to go over mine with that like tan colored chalk paint. Just to kind of make it blend a little bit better. And we're just going to have a little riser for the tear tray to hold the little sandcastle up where everybody can see it. Just attaching it with a little bit of hot glue so it doesn't move all over the place. And then I thought I would take advantage of that because then I could add some more of those cute little beach fairy garden decorations to, um, you know, decorate it a little bit more. So they had like a little hermit crab that I thought would be cute. That's a little seahorse. They're so cute. I love decorating with these. And they're kind of small on their own for a tear tray. But when you add them to a project like this, um, they totally work. So I'm also going to use the little life ring, I think. But since I was going for the beach feel, I thought, you know, I might as well just go ahead and cover the base with sand too and just make it look extra special. So just cover that base with a little bit of Mod Podge and some more of that Dollar Tree tan sand. So it totally goes with the vibe. Going to spray a little of that spray adhesive on top. I love to use that when I'm trying to secure sand to a project and then give it a quick dry, and then we can attach the fairy garden beach decorations. I am gonna glue them down so that they don't kind of fall all over the place and they stay down. Whenever you're hot gluing to sand though, make sure that you're using a lot of hot glue and really getting down to the surface underneath for the sand, otherwise it's gonna just fall off. And this is how it turned out, our little sand castle scene perfect size for a tear tray now and I love the little extra decor that we added to it. So fun. Okay our next DIY I'm gonna use one of these signs. This is from the Shore Living line. I have this from last year. I don't know if they have these again this year but some of my stores still have them in stock. There's a couple different ones. This one says take me to the ocean and it says sun at the top. But you could probably do this with a lot of different signs, but I'm gonna get a go with what they have on there and kind of use that as a reference. It's that cool like wood um, pattern, but I want mine to be like that beachy blue color. Kind of want to stain it. So I just mixed some light blue paint with water and just made a really light stain that I can then kind of wipe off a little bit so I can still see the writing through there so that I can go ahead and still get that message through there. But I want it as blue as I can. I did go over it with another coat of that blue stain just to try to make it a little bit more blue. I just don't want that paint coverage because again, I wanna be able to see the words so that we can paint those back on. Then when I have it as blue as I like it, we're just going to go over it with a white paint pen. I'm just using a white Sharpie paint pen. And look how cute that is. I think that's so pretty and beachy to use like white paint on a blue sign. It's one of my favorite things for a beachy sign. And we are going to write Take Me to the Ocean on there, which is a great song, by the way, too. And it's that great like script writing. It was pretty easy to see through and be able to replicate that with my paint pen. Now I had taped off the top where it says sun. So we're gonna remove that now. I realized that, you know, all of that staining on the front did kind of seep on the back and it is a tear tray. And so, you know, you might be able to see that on the back. So I do want it to look a little bit more professional. So I have some more of that blue stain, so I might as well just stain the back while I'm at it. Now there's little shelves on each side of it, and I thought we could decorate it with some more of that fairy garden beach stuff. I thought we could hot glue a little pelican on one side and a little palm tree on the other, just leaving the sun word in wood. And that cute and fun and very colorful? It's gonna look great on this little beach themed tear tray. 
The next item is also Fairy Garden. It's one of these like little beach hut houses. It's really cute. I just want to touch up the paint a little bit. And it was a little colorful for really what I wanted. So any of the colors that, you know, I didn't really want it to be so colorful, I'm just going over it with that tan color that like the little beach hut kind of already is. And then just kind of distress all over to kind of make it all blend in and make it look a little bit better. Sometimes they're just a little too busy, some of the fairy garden buildings I have found. And they have so many cute ones of these this year as well. So that was really easy. I just toned it down a little bit. I love the blue roof and the life ring and the little board can have a little bit of color there. So that looks cute. The next item is a Shore Living Jute Ball. Um, these are always fun to decorate with and really you don't have to do anything with it. Just kind of sit it on your tear tray like that. It's going to get look beachy. It would also be great for a nautical tray. Okay, our next DIY, we're going to use one of these great ceramic shore living um, starfish. I was so happy to find these again this year. They're so pretty. Um, I love the texture on them. I don't necessarily like that color of blue. So I'm going to paint mine light blue with that light blue color we've been using. And look how pretty it looks in that color. I absolutely love it. I'm also going to distress it slightly on all the little bumps all over the starfish using a makeup sponge and a little ivory to kind of make it look very coastal farmhouse. Once we get it all painted and dried, I'm going to display mine on a little sign. I'm going to use one of those little burlap signs from the Dollar Tree that has the little plaque on the front. And I just a short cut, I can just pop that off and add uh, the little starfish to the front. Um, you could always cover any sign with a little piece of burlap, especially since Dollar Tree is carrying so many burlap pieces now. I think this piece actually has a typo on it. Um, so they can be a little bit hard to find, but I love them because they're nice and chunky and thick. Just remember there are a few little nails poking out. So have a hammer or something nearby so you don't poke yourself. And it's the perfect size for this cute little starfish on the front. I absolutely love the texture of it, um, but I really like it so much better in this color. Now it is ceramic, um, so I'm just gonna kinda go around the edges with hot glue and then glue that down to the burlap sign. Super easy and uh, the perfect size for a tear tray. Okay, are you ready for another beach DIY? We're gonna use some of these little wood summer flip-flops. My stores have just set summer which is super fun. They've also set graduation, 4th of July, and Mother's Day. But some of my stores still don't have the Shore Living line out today. My biggest one I went there today, I couldn't believe it. And I am staining it all over with that light blue paint stain we made by mixing paint with water so that you can still see the outline of the flip-flops. Now, I kind of wanted a stand for mine. I actually had one of these little chalkboards um, it's just kind of a slanted sign, and I thought it would make a good base for this. I think I got that at the Target dollar spot, actually. Now that we have our little flip-flops stained blue, it's time to paint and decorate them. Since I used this stain, I can still see all of the writing and everything through it well. So I'm just using a white paint pen and outlining kind of everything that was already on there. And these are gonna turn out so cute and they're so easy to decorate. And they're a nice small size. I think they're gonna fit well on the tear tray itself. Now for the little um, part of the flip-flop that goes over the foot, I thought it would look really cute and coastal to do that with some Dollar Tree rope. So I'm just gonna put a bead of hot glue on right there where the top of the flip-flop is and glue down a piece of rope, super easy. And I think this adds a fun texture to it instead of just painting all of it. We're gonna cut down another piece right here and do the same thing on this one. 
and it really makes them look a little bit more high end. Gonna do the same thing here on the other side of our flip flop. Just simply cutting down the rope and gluing it on. You could probably use any size. I think this is one of like the thinner ones. Might be cute with the white rope as well. And then once we get these all decorated, I'm gonna display mine on that little chalkboard. So they're kind of like just put on display. Now for the little seashell, I thought a real seashell would be even better, right? So we're gonna use some of those little seashells from the Dollar Tree and just glue those over the little picture of the seashell. Time to attach it to this. I painted it to kind of look the color of sand so it would blend in well and just gonna hot glue that on. And I love how these turned out. I think this is gonna be the final piece for this little tear tray. And then I thought I would use a couple of the Shore Living Dollar Tree sand dollars for a little filler. So there's our little sand castle. We're gonna put that right on top of my three tier tray. It fits perfectly and nestle a little sand dollar next to it. Don't have a lot of room, so um, I, that's perfect for the little sand dollars on each side. And now we can move to the bottom. I'm gonna use some my extra Dollar Tree sand to make mine extra beachy and extra fun. Um, you know, it's gonna create a little bit of a mess, so keep that in mind if you wanna use sand on yours. But you know, I totally wanted that beachy vibe, so that's what we're gonna do. I'm just kinda spreading that out all over, and we can start decorating the second one. The little beachy Adirondack chairs, I think look perfect nestled in the sand. Love how they turned out and I love the addition of the shore living starfish. We can put our little beach hut over here. It's a great size I think for that tier and it's totally gonna go with that beach scene that we're creating. And our little blue whale will fit nicely too but he's a little short, so I'm gonna use a little wood block underneath of him just to prop him up a little bit, just so everybody can see him. I have a little bit of room left here on the middle tray, so we're gonna do that sand of my favorite beach bottle from the Shore Living line. And now we can start decorating the third tier. I have a little bit of that tan sand left, so I thought, why not? Let's spread it on this tier as well. We're going for the true beach vibe. And here's our little sandcastle fairy garden. So cute. And I love how I decorated that. And then next to that, we can do our little shore living sign. I really kind of hope they bring these back again this year. I think they're really cute. But you might still have one left over from last year too. I think I do. The one with the whale on top. And then our little nautical jute ball will be really cute down here as well. All you have to do is just toss that on there. And our little starfish that we painted attached to burlap. I love it like that. I think it's so pretty. I like it better than the other ceramic one that's white, if you know what I mean. And then our little flip flops over here will fit perfectly. I kind of have a little bit more room on the bottom because it's my largest tier. So here's a quick final reveal of our first tier tray and then we can get started on our next one. Sure. 
Okay, the theme for the next beach tier tray today is, you guessed it, mermaids. I wanted to do a really fun um, original version of a mermaid tier tray. And we're gonna start with one of these little mermaid Barbies from the toy aisle at Dollar Tree. But don't worry, it's definitely not gonna look like this when we're done. We're gonna transform it. But it's a great starter piece, I think, because it's got the great mermaid tail already. So we're just gonna take off her little outfit. And I want my mermaid to sit like she is like sitting on a rock or something like that but she's not flexible at the waist so we're gonna have to modify her a little bit the first thing that i wanted to do was just kind of tape her little hair we're gonna cover that up with something else later but just to kind of get it out of the way and then i was trying to figure out how we could make our little mermaid sit so we're gonna kind of mold it, I think. I'm gonna use some of this Model Magic from the Dollar Tree in white. And sometimes if I can't find this at the Dollar Tree, I can pick it up at Dollar General and I think it's even cheaper there. I think it's a dollar. And I thought we could use this kind of like a clay to kind of fill in the area that would be missing if we were to have her kind of like sit up like that, like I want her to be. So I'm trying to figure out exactly kind of how I want her to be sitting. And then I'm just gonna do a little hot glue here on the tip and go ahead and connect the little mermaid tail to her upper half just to get us started. She's gonna have like a big gap back there um, where she kind of like needs the rest of her body. And that's what we'll have to fill in. But first we just need to get the little hot glue to set up. What I wanna do is make her into a mermaid sculpture. Um, I really wanted her to look like something um, ceramic, maybe handmade. And it actually turned out really cool. So I use a little bit more hot glue there in the back to make sure she's pretty good and secure. And then just taking some of that white model magic and kind of filling in the area there, kind of wrapping it around her waist, kind of finishing her off like she would look if she was actually sitting there, kind of pulling it all the way around her waist to fill it in. And I really wanted to do like a white ceramic um, mermaid and so the white is gonna be perfect because we're gonna pretty much paint her all over in white and sculpt her a little bit as well. I wanted to do like a lot of white on this one um, with like a little touches of blue here and there. So I just spread that model magic out just as smooth as I can to kind of make the transition look seamless. It's really easy to work with and it does harden um, once you let it sit for a while. I'm gonna speed mine up a little bit with some heat. Now it's time to paint her. So I'm just using like an ivory chalk paint and we're just gonna go in and start painting her back, her neck, her arms. And I kinda wanna do that color all over just to kinda make her look like a little mermaid, a statue if you will. Now the tail like already has like that great like mermaid scale texture on there. So that's gonna take on that color really well. I'm also gonna go over her entire face, kind of wiping out all of her makeup and any features that were painted on there. And then it's kind of important to use a brush on this because you're gonna wanna get in all the little mermaid scales there on her tail to make her all white. I guess she's actually ivory. It's like the color of chalk paint I had, but I think it's gonna kind of blend in with the white stuff we're gonna use today too. And I am just going over it as much as I need to to mask any color or anything that might be showing through. Now, I wanted her to sit in a shell, so I thought I would use one of these little plastic shell, um, like, I guess bras from the Dollar Tree in their summer section. I love these because they have like a great texture on them already. I'm gonna cover up the holes from the little strings with just a little bit of masking tape. 
And then I thought that would be the perfect base for her to sit. It is white plastic and I want it to kind of blend in with her. So I'm going over the whole thing with some ivory chalk paint, the same color that I painted her and getting all that great texture to show up. It's gonna make it look painted and a little bit less like plastic too. Now it's time to deal with her hair. I really wasn't sure what to do with her hair. I guess you could leave it blue, but it was in a ponytail and it's kind of crazy like that. And she has a lot of bald spots as well. You know, I guess it is a Dollar Tree Barbie. <laughs> so we're gonna give her a haircut and we're gonna create our own uh, Little Mermaid hair. Just trying to cut off as much of the blue doll hair as I can to give me a good base for um, the mermaid hair we're gonna make. And so we're just gonna use that model magic again in the white and I flatten out like um, a pretty good sized circle of it that I thought would be enough to cover her head and make some cool mermaid hair. I wrap that around the back and kind of squeeze it and pull it to the back to kind of make it look like hair and just pulling it back down to kind of blend it in with her forehead, kind of giving her some like waves there in the front. And then I just start sculpting it with my fingers, like pinching it here and there, trying to make like waves, but also trying to like stretch it out, kind of making it look like she has like some longer mermaid hair. Now this model magic is really easy to um, mold and you can just keep working with it because it is soft until you get it exactly the way you want it. You know, hair can be a little tricky like that, but she's gonna have some wild mermaid hair. So just trying to make it as long as I can and as wavy as I can. That kind of looks like hair, right? It's a little hard to see her there on my white mat. Sorry about that. Just making sure I like her hairstyle and I think that looks pretty good. Now I want her to sit on the little shell. I thought that'd be really cute. I guess you could always do a rock or something like that as well, like a mermaid would be sitting on. I kind of want her to sit off to the side. So we're gonna use hot glue and glue our little Barbie mermaid down to the shell. And doesn't she look so much better than before? I really loved this DIY. I really um, kind of thought outside the box on this one and I had great results. I'm gonna go in and paint her hair now that it's dried a little bit. Um, that same ivory color that we painted her to kind of make her all blend together. Now I think she's looking pretty good. This is what she looks like at this point our little mermaid on a shell, little statue. The only thing I wanted her to be glossier to kind of make her look like she was ceramic. Normally I want things to be matte like that and you could leave it like that, but I wanted a little bit of gloss. And so I'm gonna use the glossy Mod Podge and go all over. I also thought this would help seal the paint and the model magic and everything together, kind of seal it, make it harder, make everything kind of like hold up a little bit better. So that's what I did. I just went over the whole thing with the gloss to seal her a little bit. She is one of my favorite DIYs that I've ever made. I think she's so cute. This is how she turned out. Our little siren. She's gonna be a great start for this tear tray. We're gonna do a two tear tray today for this beach tear tray. And the next item I wanted to bring in like a little bit of blue. So I'm gonna use one of these little glass lanterns from the Shore Living line at Dollar Tree. And I thought this would be the perfect size for a tear tray. It's got like the little mermaid scales all over. I'm gonna fill it in with some of these little white stones from the Crafter Square at the Dollar Tree to weigh it down and kind of give me a base to start with for this little DIY. 
super easy. Now you'll notice these are Christmas ornaments. I stock up on these every year. They're Christmas trees, but I think they look like coral and I love crafting with them. So whenever I see them, I always grab a handful. All you have to do is pop off the trunk, the bottom of the tree. You can do that with scissors or it's plastic. So it actually kind of pops off, I think a little bit easier with your fingers. And I'm just looking for some coral to fill up this little lantern, kind of peeking out from the white rocks. And I was afraid they weren't gonna stay in place, so I am gonna secure it with just a little bit of hot glue down into the little white pebbles. And this was just a really easy little shore living DIY. It's got like a little white fish tied on the front as well. And it's kind of like a floral arrangement. And I know a lot of you guys have stocked up on those little coral trees as we call them um, as well. And so this is a fun little idea for a tear tree too. And this is how it looks. Now, the next item that we're gonna use, I don't know if they're gonna bring these back again this year. This is from the Shore Living line from last year. It's just the little white rope candle holder. They're kind of cute. I hope they do bring them back. This is gonna be so easy. I'm just gonna pop in a little Dollar Tree battery operated tea light candle. And it's white, it's glossy ceramic, just like our little mermaid. So it's gonna fit in great on our tear tray. This is another Shore Living bottle. This is kind of like that teal color, which I kind of wanted to go for. It was the same as the Mermaid Lantern. It's got a little starfish tied on the front. So cute, I'm gonna use it just like that. And then the next item, um, I find these a lot at the Dollar Tree. I'm not sure if they're necessarily Shore Living. They're the little mermaid tails and this is the white glossy one. So I thought it'd be perfect for our theme. They also have these in different colors. If you find a different color, you could paint it. And then this is the Shore Living Ceramic Starfish. The other one that I was talking about that is already white. So that one is perfect for this tear tray as is Okay, we, I wanna make a little mermaid sign. And so I'm gonna use another one of those little burlap signs. I love those for tear trays because they're so chunky. I wish I could find them more often. And then some of the glass stickers from the Dollar Tree. This is the Wonder by the Sea, should you ever want to find me with the mermaid on there. They have some different styles this year too, but my stores still have some of these of the originals. So I don't know. I think the website still had the original ones too from last year. So I'm not sure if they have all of them or what, but it's a mermaid, so it's gonna work, right? I'm gonna leave this sign on this one and just cover it up with some of that Dollar Tree removable wallpaper and the white board pattern. That always gives me that coastal nautical feel and it's easier I think than painting and drawing a surface and especially when you wanna cover up like words and stuff on there. But I wanna use kind of the existing sign on there with that burlap background. Now I do like to distress mine a little bit to make them look a little bit more hand painted, kind of break up the roughness of the lines and stuff in between. So I'm just gonna paint mine. I'm doing it before I put it on there, but you could totally do it after you apply it as well. And I'm gonna Mod Podge it as well, just to kind of give it a little bit more of a glossy feel. Cause we're doing a lot of white glossy stuff on this little mermaid tear tray. Now I'm just gonna peel and stick. I love using this removable wallpaper from the Dollar Tree. I think it's so easy for DIYs like this. And now we have the perfect little sign a background for our little glass sticker. It's gonna be such an easy sign. I love using these glass stickers because, you know, I hardly ever use them on glass because they're just stickers. You can kind of put them on anything. So I just, peel and stick that down right on top. And we have a cute little mermaid sign. Okay, now the next two items are also from Dollar Tree. I thought they kind of looked like seagrass. They have these little clips on them that I don't really need. And so I am just trying to pull those off 
And we can kind of use those to decorate the tray. And you might recognize these. These are Easter eggs, actually, um, that are on sale right now um, from Easter. But they have some that look like little white pearlescent shells. And so I thought we could do a cute little shell, like an open shell, using the little egg and then using some of those faux pearl beads from the Crafter Square at Dollar Tree. We can even have a little pearl inside. Now I kind of need it to stand up and so I decided to use like one of these little wood rings from the Dollar Tree just to make an easy little base for the bottom of our seashell. And they're already the perfect color, so this is gonna be a really easy DIY. We're just gonna hot glue the wood ring to the bottom of the shell. I kind of wish that they were attached, you know, like a shell, you know, cause you know, somehow, sometimes Easter eggs are attached where you could open and shut them. That would make it even easier, but that's okay. We will just make our own attachment. It's kind of got a little groove in there that you can fit one right inside the other. And so that's what we're gonna do with just a little bit of hot glue. And just sit that right in there. I love, you know, the little shell bras from the Dollar Tree from like the Luau section. These, I'm always looking for a shell that you can use for a DIY. The Shore Living plastic dishes right now that are with their kitchen stuff, those work great as well. Just making sure that my hot glue is set up and now we can just add a fun little pearl inside. These are so pretty and I think this is the perfect use for them. So we're just gonna glue a little pearl right inside. Super easy DIY and this is gonna go really well with the feel of this tear tray. The next item, we're gonna use another one of these little jute balls from the Shore Living Line at Dollar Tree. You'll notice this one's a little smaller. It seems like they've gotten smaller over the years. And then um, a sand dollar, a starfish, and a seashell, all from the Dollar Tree. The first two are from the Shore Living Line. Now, I wanted to make a fun little pennant banner. You guys know I like to do that a lot of times on my tier trays. I think it really decorates one of the tiers. And so I'm gonna use some of the Shore Living twine. This is like the brown and white one and then some of the little Shore Living Mermaid clothespins. I thought this would be perfect because I could actually just use the clothespins, right? And just clip that to the twine. How easy is that? Usually I try to pop the little clothespins off these which can result in broken um, wood pieces, but this time we're actually gonna use, use them as intended. And I kind of like them, the wood color they already are. Sometimes they're not punched out perfectly, but I think these are pretty good. And I just attach that to the top tier of my two tier tray, and we can start putting this together. I think my little coral mermaid vase looks great in the back. It's gonna give me a little touch of blue. Our little rope candle can go over here. That's great for the top shelf. There's not a lot of room. And here is our star of the show, our little white mermaid and some white seashells as well to kind of fill in all kinds of white. I really wanted a very white feel on this one, but with just those punches of blue, a little starfish against the pole looks nice too. Just using a lot of like white bleach seashells. I think I got some of these at Dollar Tree, but some on the beach and then some of the little white pebbles that we used in the vase to kind of fill it in, to kind of make it look like a rocky shore. And just kind of, you know, raining or scattering those all over and filling up any of the wood. We'll also put one of the little plants up here on top as well, kind of peeking out from the rocks. And I think that looks really cute for the top tier of our little mermaid tier tray. Now on the bottom, we have our little mermaid sign, our little jute ball back here in the back, our little vase that is that perfect pop of teal with a little starfish on there. Our white ceramic starfish is gonna be great up against the pole, I think. 
our little shell egg that we made with the little pearl inside. Our mermaid tail is gonna be perfect for the theme as well. And then we're gonna do the same thing we did on the top tier. We're gonna fill it in with white bleached seashells. If you don't have any white bleached seashells and you wanna get the same kind of vibe, you could always paint your shells from the Dollar Tree white as well. And then filling in all of the rest of the space with those little white pebble rocks from the Dollar Tree to give it that white shore, rocky shore finish. This was a really fun beach tier tray to put together. I really hope you liked it. I really liked being able to use the Barbie doll, something from the Dollar Tree. Another plant down there, and then there is our little sand dollar from the Shore Living Line. And maybe another starfish. Okay. Here is a quick final reveal, and then I will show you our third and final beach tier tray today. I want to take a quick moment to tell you about my private Facebook group. I have it linked in the description below. I also have a Facebook page that you can follow and I'm on Instagram, TikTok, and Pinterest. And my handle on all of those is Crafty Beach on YouTube. And I would love to see you over there. Okay. Now, this was the second tear tray that I ever made. One of my very first videos here on YouTube. And so... I just kind of laid everything out that I thought might work for a beach tier tray for my kitchen table. And I don't do a very good job of showing you some of the things I don't DIY, but I'll try to show you when we build it. So our first DIY, I'm gonna use another one of those little shell bras from the Luau section at the Dollar Tree. And I'm gonna put both of them together to make a cool little seashell statue. Now, I do need to fill up the holes, and rookie move, I'm kind of using spackling for that. It's a little hard to get it to stay in there. If I were to do it again, I would probably use a little masking tape inside to block off those holes, but I want them to make them look like seashells. Um, they have that great texture on there. And so I just kind of, you could use brown for this. I'm going to use gray because it's what I had there. And just kind of distress all over the white shell to bring out that great texture. Just wiping off the excess with a baby wipe. And look how cool that looks. I want it to look like an old, like real a seashell. And we're gonna do the same thing on the other one because I'm gonna put them like back to back, like you're putting the giant shell back together to make a cute little DIY, perfect size for a tear tray. Now, this is me trying to fill the holes with spackle again from the other side. Um, <laughs> And you can. It actually works better on the other side because you don't have to worry about um, sanding off any of the excess. You know what I mean? And now I just want to make a quick little base with some Dollar Tree Jenga blocks. We're just going to glue some together just to make a little base to stand up our seashell. 
So I glued two together, two together, and then all four just to make a quick little base. You can use kind of whatever you've got, but you need something that's gonna make the little seashell stand up. Now I didn't want it to be raw wood. I kind of wanted it to match my tear tray, which is like that galvanized metal. So I'm just gonna paint it dark gray, just to kind of make it blend in with the tear tray. It's also gonna kind of go with the gray that we distressed our seashells with. Now I'm gonna do a very fine a layer of hot glue all around the outer shell and then very quickly attach the front of the shell to glue them together. Now, if you're not quick enough, you're gonna have that happen, but I just go back with a little bit more hot glue until it's secure. And it's like the only time I really um, made the shells like this. Um, this is a fun DIY because it's just got that really good texture on there and it looks like an old giant shell. I finally got it all glued shut and now we can attach it to our little gray base that we made with just some more hot glue standing it up on its side. Okay, our next DIY is gonna be one of these little shore living anchors. They seem to have these every year with the shore living line. They have them again this year. I have a blue one, but I really wanted mine to be this beautiful like beachy Caribbean blue color. So I'm just gonna paint mine. I love these anchors. They're the perfect size for a tear tray and they have that great wood texture on there that makes them look like they're made out of real wood. So I'm just gonna paint mine this pretty color of beachy blue and it's gonna look great on my tear tray. The tear, beach tear tray that I'm making is gonna be for my kitchen table. So it's gonna be kind of a functional piece, but very decorative and it's gonna be another three tier tray. Um, like the first one, my galvanized metal tray. That's basically all we're gonna do on this one is just paint it, make it cute. I was a little worried that my paint on the back was a little sloppy and you might be able to see it from the other side of the tear tray. So let's go ahead and paint that, that pretty, blue color as well. And I think I called this Caribbean blue, but you know what? I think it's actually the turquoise color. I saved the little hanger that was on there before and I'm just gonna retie it on there. And this is ready to go. Okay, the next DIY, I'm gonna use another little shore living sign. This one says, relax the beach, fix everything which I didn't realize that when I started the project because I didn't realize that it was kind of misspelled. So I'm gonna use some of this craft wood from the Dollar Tree and I'm just cutting down a back and two sides to make it into a box because I thought we could make it functional, we could make it into a little napkin holder for my tear tray. Now that's when I realized that it says the beach fix everything. <laughs> ah, I don't know if they're gonna have these little ones again this year. Last year they had a different version. This one was from, you know, two years ago. Um, the first year that they had the short living line, at least at my store, I think we had a test store. So I just glue my little wood pieces together to make a little box and glue that on the back of the sign. But it still kind of gives you an idea of something that you can make if you need your tear tray to be um, on your table and functional. I take my other piece of craft wood and glue that on the bottom, kind of making a box. I noticed that there was a little gap here in front. And so I'm gonna kind of fix that with some Jenga blocks from the Dollar Tree, just kind of gluing them together to make a little base. And I think that's gonna work. Perfect size for napkins. Now I wanna paint mine, I'm just using, it's kind of a lake blue color. I wanted to use like a different combination of blue on this. And so we painted those Jenga blocks in the front, that blue color. And then we're also gonna go around the sides and the back on that craft wood and paint those blue as well. I also go around like all of the edges kind of the back, anything that was kind of visible and give it that same shade of blue. I also distressed the little, the beach right there. 
and there's the fix everything. I have to do something to fix that. So I decided just to fix it with paint. Ours is just gonna stay the beach. I think it's gonna be fine. So I just painted over the typo with blue paint but you can kind of still see the writing. So I am gonna go over it with a little um, ivory chalk paint to try to uh, mask that a little bit. Problem solving with a Dollar Tree sign for sure. <laughs> you gotta watch those Dollar Tree signs. I've had like typos a lot, like St. Patrick's Day misspelled and stuff like that. And you don't notice it until you're like right in the project. But now we're gonna distress all of that blue with some ivory, kind of giving it more of a coastal feel. Kind of making it go with that, the beach sign, which is fine. And then the little starfish that was on top, I thought we would paint that like more of a, like a royal color of blue. Just to provide another little shade of blue. And we finally have a little beach napkin holder. I think that's gonna work. Then I decided that it needed a few polka dots. So just using the end of my paintbrush, I give a little white polka dots to kind of make it match the little starfish that was on the sign. Okay, once it's dry, we can fill this up with napkins and it is ready to go for the tear tray. The next DIY is super easy. Just a Dollar Tree a blue and white bucket and fill it up with seashells that I found at the beach. Can't get any easier than that. You can also use seashells from the Dollar Tree. Now, this is another toy. This is a toy dolphin from the Dollar Tree. And I thought we could paint it, kind of make it look like, you know, a little dolphin sculpture for our tear tray and less like a plastic toy, right? So I'm using that like light blue color and we're gonna paint all over. Whenever you paint plastic, um, it's gonna look a little bit more like a ceramic piece like that. And you're gonna get even better coverage if you use chalk paint. I'm just using acrylic, so it is gonna take a couple coats to kind of mask the color that was already on there. So I just do like a thin coat of the blue, dry it, go back in there with another one, it is going to require mini coats. And then I'm also going to do the same thing here on the little tail. And I think he turned out really cute, just really easy. It's okay if some of that color shines through, it'll kind of make it look distressed. Okay, the next item are these little beach houses from the Shore Living Line at Dollar Tree. I'm just going to um, kind of change out the little glitter foam stickers that was on there. I thought I could switch those out with some wood pieces from the Shore Living Line. Now they've had these little beach houses the last two years with the Shore Living Line. Don't know if they have them again this year. Have you guys seen them? Let me know in the comments below. Here I made a big mistake with them though. Um, I was trying to get all the adhesive off and I kind of um, went a little too hard and kind of caused a little bit of damage there. I kind of wanted to use two of them back to back that were different, but since I messed it up, I decided let's just use two of the same because I had two of the same. They say on beach time, they're super cute. And then I'm going to use some of the little starfish clothespins and try my best to pop that off without breaking our cute little starfish. Sometimes a little heat can help that too. I was trying to pry it off and struggling as you can see, because they glue those things down really well. And then um, be just super careful if you take the little glitter stickers off yours. I always stock up on these. I think they're a great size for tear trays. This size house, you could kind of do your own thing if you can't find this exact one. But I like the kind of blue on aqua combination of that little blue starfish. I'm just gonna hot glue that on. It looks like a way better than what was on there before. I don't know why they use that like cheap glitter sticker. There we go, we're gonna do those back to back on the top of a tear tray. And now I wanted to make a beach coastal wood bead garland. And so I'm gonna mix up a little water with this beautiful like aqua color. And we're gonna start just trying to stain the wood beads to get some blue ones. These are wood beads that I got on Amazon. This was back before Dollar Tree started carrying them, but I'm gonna do just a DIY wood bead garland. 
um, using just raw wood beads and that little sand dollar that you see there from the Shore Living Line at Dollar Tree. Once I get them pretty good, I'm gonna kind of put mine out on a paper towel to dry. They're very pretty. And I thought a combination of like the blue with the raw wood would look really beachy, right? And it's okay if some of the wood shows through. I'm just trying to give mine a quick dry and we can start stringing these together. Now a sand dollar works great because it's already got little slits in there. So you can just use some twine and tie that off. And that's gonna make a great end to the wood bead garland. And then we can start stringing these beads on here. Sometimes I like to use a giant needle on mine, but you totally don't have to. You could always put a little tape on the end or a little hot glue to make it easier to string. But we could mix like different colors, different sizes together just to make a little variety and string a simple wood bead garland that we can string around the tear tray. I always love that on a tear tray. It gives a great touch. And this was a fun DIY one. Now, the only thing you gotta be really careful is that your paint is dry inside your bead when you do that because it kind of kind of get on some of the other beads. Now we're gonna just make a tassel by taking a jute twine from the Dollar Tree, wrapping it around my hand till I get a thick enough little tassel, cut it off, and another little piece that we can tie here at the top to tie it all together. You know, I've been spoiled the last few years at Dollar Tree with all the seasons like making these little would-be garlands for you. Definitely a time saver, but they do have um, some blue ones that are a shorter version of this with the Shore Living line this year that have sand dollars and starfish, I believe, at the end of them. You could always do that as well. That'd be really cute. I'm gonna take my needle and string it through my little DIY tassel that we made and tie that off. And we have a little wood bead garland. Okay, it's time to start putting this tear tray together. Again, I kind of forgot to show you some of the items that I use, but I can show you now when I put it together. Here is our little napkin box that we made, very coastal. I actually had Easter napkins at the time, but we're gonna fill that in here on the bottom, perfectly functional. A little blue mermaid tail like the white one that I showed you before from the Dollar Tree. And that's one of the items I hadn't showed you. Now this I actually got at Target Dollar Spot. It's a little Adirondack chair that holds ketchup and mustard um, from the summer um, at, Dollar, at the Dollar Spot at Target. And it was the perfect size for my salt and pepper. So that's another little dollar spot find. A blue whale, I hadn't shown you that either from the Dollar Tree, similar to the one we used on the first tier tray today, is gonna do a good job finishing off the bottom. Now here is our little seashell that we made. That turned out great and it fits perfectly here, I think on the second tier. One of the jute balls from the Shore Living Line at the Dollar Tree. Again, I think I used that on all of them. And um, a little blue anchor that we painted. I love it, that color. I'm gonna kind of lean mine up against the jute ball. That looks kind of cool together, I think. And then our little blue and white bucket from the Dollar Tree. And all we did was just fill that with the seashells. Here is our DIY wood bead garland that we made. And I did get those wood beads on Amazon. They should be available in my shop below if you want to DIY some yourself. Dollar Tree also has some, but maybe not in these exact sizes. I'm just gonna kind of string it along the second tier. It's not super long. Kind of arranging it with what I've already got on there. And again, I think this was my second tear tray I ever made. My first one on my channel was a spring tear tray and this one was the second one. So my footage is a little different, but we tried to make it work today. I put some double stick tape on the back of my little beach house to go on the top. 
so that I can attach it to the pole in the center of my tear tray without it tipping over because it's in such a high use area on my table and it's going to be touched every time somebody wants a napkin, salt and pepper shaker. And I wanted to do back to back on those beach houses. And so that's what we're going to do. And you'll never know they're the same one because they're on opposite sides of the tear tray, right? So I put some double sided tape on the back of this one too and sticking it on the other side of the tear tray pole. And we've got just a little bit of room left here on the top. And I found these like a little greenery pick. I'm just gonna use it attached to the pin. And it kind of looks like seagrass over to the side of my house. And then we also DIY that little toy dolphin. I think he's gonna be really cute up here on top. Kind of jumping off the side maybe. And then I found a little plant from the Dollar Tree with sand and a little jar. I thought that would be really cute up here and really coastal as well. And so let's do one of those on both sides, like little house plants in front of our beach houses. And um, some of the shore living a starfish would be really cute at the top as well. Gonna kind of lean that up against our beach house and kind of fill up some of the open space. You could always use sand on this tear tray as well, like I did on the first one. That'd be really cute. But since it's on my kitchen table, I didn't really want sand. That it'd be a little too messy. Okay, I think that looks pretty good. Let me show you this final reveal real quick, and then you'll be able to see all the ones we made today. for watching. I'd like to tell you about memberships on my channel. I've just introduced them for $4.99 a month. You can support my channel. You're going to get early access to my videos and other perks. And I do already have a couple of members. I want to give a huge crafty beach bum shout out to Coastal Couple and Karen O'Haran. Thank you so much for supporting my channel. And if you made it this far, leave an emoji of your favorite sea creature below. And don't forget to like, comment your favorite thing below, and don't forget to subscribe. We're on our way to 15K. Right in front.
for watching if you'd like more crafty beach youtube thinks that you might enjoy this video right here